Yeah. Welcome back to another uncomfortably underwhelming waiver wire week, but it's arguably the most important. You know, if you're still hanging around here, if you're still watching these videos, you either have a weird Nick fetish or you're in your fantasy football championship. I would hope that every single one of you falls into the latter bucket, but we must proceed. There are some running backs that to be had. There are some wide receivers to be had. There honestly are not tight ends to be had, but there are some streaming defenses that I think can help you lock up the goddamn hardware. So if you're here, thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us all year. Thank you for supporting the brand. Every comment, thumbs up, whatever. This might be the last waiver wire week. I don't know. Some of you lunatics play into week 18. Maybe I'll come bike for you guys. I hope you guys had a good holiday. Celebrate Christmas. We got New Year's Eve coming up. We got the Bash Finals coming up. Flying Jordan out. Shout out IDP Army. We got someone else. Matrix rep. I'm not actually sure who that is in, in real life, but he's from New York City already, so he's going to be here for the games watching. Week 17, we'll be doing a streaming party, but y'all are here for the waiver wire. I understand. I'll keep my mouth shut because y'all need to eat. Mouths open for you. Mouths shut for me. Tyler Algier is my favorite pickup of the week. And it's probably the most obvious and probably the most owned player in your league on this uh, on this list. All right, Algier is taking over as the guy there. He was atop the list last week. He's probably much more highly owned now. Again, I think they're investing into the future and they want to see what pieces they're going to be using for the offense next year. Ritter. Algier, Algier again, another big game, 18 carries, 74 yards, but gets very involved in the passing game, uh, five targets, four catches, kind of just replaced every part of Corderell Patterson, unfortunately, because he was one of my, you know, he's one of those dudes that like, once you have him on your team, you just have respect for him for the rest of your life, right? I will always be a Corderell Patterson fan, even if he winds up as a Cleveland Brown next year, which I could 100% see happen, but big fan Cordy P, his time seems like it's over in Atlanta, it's Tyler Algier's time right now, and they play against Arizona next week. That's going to be a Jusse matchup. Behind him, I mean, listen, there's not a ton of great players that you could probably confidently put into your lineup. You have Gus Edwards, who went 11 for 99. He's still behind J.K. Dobbins in the pecking order. They played against Atlanta, which is an easy team to run against. They play against Pittsburgh next week, which is a little bit tougher. Gus is someone who's like, if he's not getting into the end zone, he's not giving you a very high upside day. So I'm not going overly excitement about him. But I am excited about Jahan Dotson, who's my number one waiver wire pickup of the week at wide receiver. And he's been on this list for a couple weeks in a row because he's someone who's just so he, he fits that mold of a Washington receiver that they're building around so well the undersized but such crispy routes man and it's starting to come to fruition now that he's fully healthy now that my goddamn heat pipe is banging right now my heat pipe apparently loves Jahan Dotson but now you can shut the fuck up please for all y'all that have lived in New York City you know you got these heat pipes everywhere whether it's in a commercial building or an apartment that literally get up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius wherever you're from right now and they just make weird noises it's like they have people living inside them that are like get me the fuck out of here i'm burning to death and it just goes off at all hours of the day it's in it, it makes n absolutely no sense maybe it's Jahan dotson maybe it's him because he's burning fucking hot right now three straight games with a touchdown three straight games of double digit ppr points three straight games actually of 15 or more ppr points this guy is going crazy to end the year is it wentz is it heineke it doesn't matter but i'd actually prefer to see wentz if i'm starting Jahan dotson because if you look at these splits i mean the numbers are are real when wentz is in the lineup uh for Jahan dotson right now you have five games with five games without 14.3 PPR points with Wentz in the lineup. You're talking about 5.8 targets. He literally has scored a touchdown in every single game with Carson Wentz. He's averaging one touchdown per game with Wentz under center. Jahan Dotson, actually, fuck this, move Jahan Dotson over Gus Edwards in the rankings for this week. We need to talk about Romeo Dobbs as well. He's been shaky this year. Christian Watson took over, but then Christian Watson, Watson's hip took over his body in their game this weekend. He missed the second half. And we don't know if he's going to play, but if he's out, Romeo Dobbs kind of fills in as that like high upside, random X factor receiver for the Packers. And since he's come back from the injury, he's starting to regain his full time status again. Last week, he played 32% of the snaps. This week, he played 61% of the snaps. Next week, if Watson is out, I'm sure he's going to be back up to like 80, 90%. And that is a player that you want. If Watson is out, Dobbs is playing against Minnesota. There are fireworks in the air when teams play Minnesota. So Dobbs is actually a sneaky, really, really, really good pickup this week. Close eye on Christian Watson. Khalil Herbert came by 
41 percent of the snaps so he went right right back into like a, a really sizable role even though david montgomery is still the guy herbert absolutely nothing from a production standpoint six carries seven yards but did see three targets and it is the last week so playing against detroit they're a great run defense this, despite getting absolutely shredded by chuba hubbard who's next up on the list um so Khalil herbert i guess i just put this on the list to waste my fucking breath because you kind of need to see a good game from herbert before you put him into your lineup and we only have one more week left so you're never going to actually want to put him into your lineup so maybe david montgomery tweaks his ankle at practice this week or something and therefore you'd want to own Cleo herber but outside of that i'm not sure why i'm yelling at you about him but chuba hubbard has has just gotten it done week in and week out right against this really tough detroit run defense deonta foreman obviously had the massive game but chuba goes 12 for 125 on the ground and prior to that he'd been getting it done through the air so he's like the pass catching back and they play at tampa bay which is a tough ground game but again they just did it to detroit which was an elite run defense up of the last you know six weeks or so so chua hubbard i really really think he's not a talented back but he is starting to prove me wrong and i guess you could play him as a flex play if you need to because very clear split committee there and going against tampa they might need to throw the ball a little bit and he is the preferred guy on those downs and then you have a, a few fat running backs that like literally do nothing but they'll get you touches zach moss 12 for 65 the most unsurprising bad day after a huge day the week before that had 24 carries in week 15 he becomes the guy for indy in that backfield but he goes again 12 for 65 and i think he caught one ball for like five yards so i think that's what you can expect when indy's in a normal game script and they're not up by 35 fucking points so zach moss is you know what Zach Moss is, and you have to be really desperate to start him. Same thing with Royce Freeman is basically just Zach Moss in Houston now. He's taken over as the guy there. Uh, 16 carries, only 32 yards, so he's like a worse version of Zach Moss. I just, I, you can't really play him. Some other dudes to be notable of, like Richie James, the New York Giants wide receivers, Isaiah Hodgins. They're playing against Indianapolis, who is just not a good team right now whatsoever. They're not playing for anything. So I think like either of them... I, I'd rather play Richie James, but Hodgins has been pretty consistent. And if you're in a PPR league, you really need someone at flex. I think you can roll the dice with Mr. Richie, Dick James over here. Hunter Renfro, similar player, finally, finally did something this year. He got into the end zone. They play against San Fran, so not a favorable matchup. Not really comfortable getting him into my lineup, but you know, it was nice to see him do some some phone some phone booth feet moves that we've been accustomed to to seeing him do for so long. Maybe he becomes a part of the team again. Outside of that, I hate basically every single person on the waiver wire. But some injuries to keep an eye on that are probably not serious, but could be and would get you ahead of your teammates in a major way if they miss time. So Derrick Henry missed practice yesterday with a hip injury. If he misses time, we have the rookie Hassan Haskins behind him. We also have Julius Chestnut another rookie behind him hard to say how the how the carries will be split up um probably mainly going to Hassan Haskins so I think he's someone to absolutely grab if you have Derrick Henry and Jamal Williams also supposedly got hurt uh we don't have a lot of detail on that but if he's hurt of course DeAndre Swift takes over a very very big workload out there in Detroit but they've been very conscious of using a running back by committee there uh, for the Lions, and they're playing against Chicago, a team you could definitely run against. Justin Jackson is the sneaky ad. So I think he gets double-digit touches if Jamal Williams misses time. Could get some goal line carries. They have no rhyme or reason for goal line carries behind Jamal Williams. So he could end up with 12 carries, 50 yards, and a touchdown. DeAndre Swift will probably get 15-plus touches. But Jamal Williams, Derrick Henry are two guys to absolutely keep an eye on as it relates to injuries for the week, let's talk about defense. Kansas City, if they're somehow still not owned in your league, playing against Denver, monster favorites. The Chargers defense has played really fucking well as of late. Go pick them up. They're playing against the Rams at home. I kind of like Atlanta. If Trace McSorley is the quarterback for them, again, for Arizona, he is not an NFL quarterback. He is. He was bad in college. He was bad in college. I don't know how teams can think he could be good at the NFL level, but Atlanta, for as bad as the defense they are, I would gladly play them against Trace McSorley. So yeah, KC, LAC, AT. The Giants at home against Indianapolis. You love to see it. And then lastly, the Detroit Lions against the Chicago Bears. I know that might be going against conventional wisdom, but they're favorites. They've played well on defense sometimes. Uh, I just think this could be a game where they surprise a lot of people and play well on defense. And they're number five on the list, and they're one of the teams that are definitely available to stream on your waiver wire. It would be KC, LAC, ATL, NYG, DET, BDGE, out for Week 17 waiver wire. Again, I love y'all. Thank you for hanging out. If you enjoyed the video, hit this. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll still be ripping off content for the rest of the week, of course. And then we're doing a huge playoff push. So we're going to be doing 
uh, videos that preview every single NFL playoff game in January into February and the Super Bowl. We're going to be talking about our favorite prize pick squares, you know, betting the over-unders and betting the fucking money lines and the spreads, talking about the biggest, you know, the injury reports and stuff. So if you're really into football, you're really into the playoffs and shit, we're going to be doing breakdowns of every game during that span. All right, so make sure you subscribe. I love y'all again, and I'm out of hell.